Welcome to Trees with Squill, a podcast hosted by Squillum. In this podcast, we will discuss trees, forest science, lignin and the like. Now let's branch out and leaf it all on the table. Hello, it is Squillum. I am recording on that same day that I went for a walk in the rainforest and it was really wet and rainy and it's still rainy and I'm cold and my socks are wet. But I've got not much else to do because I've done all my homework now. I did that this morning over my cup of coffee and now I'm um, drinking my juice. Uh, um, I wanted to talk about something that I'm very passionate about and that is the destruction of all camphor laurel trees. Trees will squill, hates a tree, you might be thinking. Yeah, you know what? I do hate noxious woody weeds that destroy biodiversity. Um, and that is my awkward brief introduction to the camphor laurel. Um, Latin name, Cinnamomum camphora. Uh, introduced from... Oh, God, so I don't have internet, so I can't check. <laughs> 1800s, introduced from somewhere in Asia. That's very disgustingly broad, but introduced here because, uh, just like a lot of other introduced trees, ha- provides fantastic shade. But the issue is, at the time of introduction, of course, they were introduced by the Europeans that invaded Australia, and their land management ta- techniques included. Uh, burning out all forests to clear them for agriculture use, burning out rainforests to clear them for, you guessed it, agriculture use. Pretty much destruction of the land, disrespect to the land, uh, widespread soil destruction that takes thousands of years to regain, so thanks for that, we won't get that back. Um, And camphor laurel is just physiologically adapted to grow on poor nutrient soils which is where rainforests historically existed in Australia I hope you can hear that weird bird that's great um, additionally uh, widespread agricultural land equals you know widespread land no other canopies in the way so camphor laurel given that it's a tree dispersed by birds could easily infestate these places Um, This kind of really picked up in the late 1900s. Uh, I don't know what happened before then, but that's just what the literature told me when I was researching it. Anyway, so to me, the camphor laurel, I get it. Great shade. Widespreading canopy. Adapted to climate change. Temperature increases. Adapted to poor and nutrient soils, which is what we're seeing across Australia. Uh, but it's just horrifically weedy. You see the weedy trees coppice, or have a coppice look to them, I should really say, in that there are multiple trunks within one little metre by metre square radius, really. They also in other areas create these single species communities so the campers stick together and just displace the native species that were there such as in Gunungri National Park where the uh, sub canopy is now camphor laurel or on the northern edge of the Lismore uh, Cemetery at the windbreak where there's a hoop pine stand hoop pine being a, a native Araucaria genus um, tree Um, that stand is now being displaced by campfers I have a picture which I can show you if you want Um, yeah okay so I've I've dove really quickly into the invasive nature of them but let's backtrack for one hot second and talk about identifying camphor laurels Um, maybe I'll edit this to be at the front no I won't um, because it doesn't matter all you need to know about identifying camphor laurels 
is that in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland, everything the light touches is camphor. And that's a phrase that I'd like to say sums up the entirety of the issue. They have alternately arranged pediolate glossy, <laughs> glossy oblong leaves with magi- wet. Gosh, sorry, with wavy margins. Pediolate, that term just refers to having pediol, which is like a little leaf stem. It is the leaf stem, if you will. But that is a really useful feature to be able to identify because a lot of uh, phagaceae species, like bottles and whatnot, um, don't have that. Maybe they do that, I don't think about it. Well, actually, they're more um, fake leaves, flattened pedioles. That sound is crazy. What is going on? Anyway, um, the underside of camphor laurels, cinnamoma uh, camphora, is not glossy. In the springtime, <coughs> now, uh, the leaves lighten and they flower. So they have little white flowers which cluster on the ends of stems. And the bark is tessellated in dark brown to black in colour. So... They're pretty. It hurts to say, but they are. Like they're a classic tree, you know, they look like they look like a broccoli. Um, it's just that in Australia they really disrupt whatever biodiversity we've got left in urban areas such as this cemetery that I've told you about, in national parks such as such as Gunungri that I've told you about. Unfortunately, much of the national parking invasions by camphor laurel were open ecosystems, which are very valuable for many other reasons, such as open ecosystems normally uh, receive regular fire, which camphor laurel is adapted to not die from because they can just regenerate via re-sprouting and suckering, so they... Fire is just not an issue for them. To kill them, you have to use chemicals. Like, um, you have to use <laughs> glyphosate. You have to use glyphosate. Farmers, by word of mouth, I've learnt that farmers use they drill a hole into the camphor laurel and they stick a rope into this hole, and then the rope, the other end of the rope, is stuck into a bucket of glyphosate. Anyway, back to open ecosystems. They exist on poor and nutrient soils, including basalt origins. They are valuable for the ancient lineage of Gondwan and flora and fauna. This makes habitat they provide uh, valuable to many endangered communities. They're unique, for example, um, they create older open ecosystems, have hollowed trees, which provide space for sugar gliders to reside in. And as a consequence of that point, they are of global conservation significance, inverted commas, because that's a uh, important term. Um, unfortunately, their area to cover is declining due to clearing and suppression of fire policies, which would otherwise promote fire to keep them regenerating as nature intended. Um, so yeah, camphor laurel easily invades a place like this where fire is not present and where sunlight is ample because camphor laurels are adapted to the changing climate. They, yeah, they enjoy the heat. They have shallow, widespreading root systems, which makes water uptake easier for them. Um, they are the perfect pest, if you will. Well done in that sense. Um, but I wrote this really. <laughs> I have the, I, I have an assignment at the moment comparing two trees in your area. So I chose the camphor because it is planted as an urban tree in the cemetery, and it invasively established everywhere else. Um, I also chose the weeping paper bark, Mel- Melaleuca leucodendra. Um, so I suppose 
I was kind of proud, if you will, of the conclusion that I thought of. Um, Because I could walk to, like, these planted trees from anywhere, really. It just just made a little, little loop. So the conclusion that I came up with pretty much instantly that I based the rest of my assignment around was as follows. In defiance of the shade they provide, the presence of sea camphora in the landscape is a horrific reminder of the environmentally detrimental agricultural expansion during early European settlement and the complete disrespect that white Australians have towards Indigenous culture. The clearing of the big scrub rainforest at settlement allowed for rapid expansion of sea camphora across northern New South Wales and southern Queensland. Since the bird population cannot be controlled, it is likely likely that this invasion would occur on an urban scale too, which is a major limitation to their planting in other areas, urban areas. Any apparent shade and climate adaptation benefit of planting sea camphora ought to be sought for in native species such as M. leucodendra, which perpetuates cultural indigenous values and respects the land and original forested species. <laughs> Original forested spaces, spaces, crumbs. Basically, I I understand why Canfalora would be seen as some kind of ideal planted species in an urban setting, but it just kind of uh, disgusts me, if you will, that we would plant that when there are native species available. But then on the flip side, I understand the climate catastrophe that we're in. And so perhaps, perhaps camphor laurel is our only excuse and it'll be the only tree to ever exist soon. Like that, you know what, like that's better than no trees, unfortunately, because they do grow so quickly. In like 10 years, we'll have really valuable areas. And by that, I mean like, I think the trees are very special to cities in particular and even like urban, suburban towns. Um, Yeah, trees create a sense of space and community and belonging. People will find a tree that they like and they sit under it and stop. (laughs) And campers, like if they're planted right, I suppose, in the right place where they don't coppice and have the multiple stemmed... uh, experience um then they can create great roots which i assume children love climbing over like the fig species around australia they're quite fun um yeah i hate careful <laughs> what am i saying i think it just sucks to be at the stage in the world where climate change is so uh, intense that you have to look at an exotic noxious weed to provide a solution to a very rapidly urbanizing landscape and that's all I have to say I hope you have a great lunch Miso feel great after that episode. Would you believe you've just been listening to Trees with Squill, hosted by Squillum. Music track insane by Alfonso on Bandcamp, produced and recorded by Squillum. Follow at Trees with Squill on Instagram for more. See you next time. Okay.